So fantasy, we want to add fantasy in here a little bit because we do know that it's a fantasy season and there's going to be some awards, kind of, right? Fantasy awards. So what we wanted to do was give two awards. Fantasy breakout player of the year and fantasy bust of the year. So I want to start off with, and I want you can kick us off, Zach, with fantasy breakout player of the year. Who is your fantasy breakout player of the year? All right, well, so this is a guy that, for the, for the record, like, I'm not just saying this. I have three fantasy teams. I drafted him on all of them, and I know that might sound biased, but there's a reason why I drafted. I, I overdrafted him in most cases, but for the fantasy breakout player of the year, give me DeAndre Swift of the Detroit Lions. Mm-hmm. I think this dude is an absolute stud. He could catch passes. He could run the ball, and I think he could be similar to what Jonathan Taylor was last year, and I know those are crazy expectations, But there were just so many times last year where I was watching the Lions and DeAndre Swift, and I was just like, whoa, like, this is a guy I need to draft next year. And uh, we both agreed the Lions offense should be improved. I think they know that he, especially without Jamison Williams early, is going to be their top playmaker. I think they need to give him the ball as many times as possible. You said it earlier this show, their offensive line should be much improved, one of the more underrated player uh, units in the league. So, yeah, for my fantasy breakout player of the year, give me DeAndre Swift of the Lions. I like that pick. I really do. I think definitely he could be a top 10 fantasy player, arguably top seven if he stays healthy. I like that pick for sure. For me, my breakout play in fantasy is going to be Gabe Davis, Gabriel Davis. You know, I had to trade for the guy. I traded for him. I'm buying the hype. I'm sipping the Kool-Aid, throw it up. I'm going Gabe Davis. You see, when you look at the quarterback, Josh Allen, who led the fantasy world quarterback one the last couple of years. Right. I don't think there's no, you know, outlet where that changes. I, I think Josh Allen will remain the top fantasy quarterback. And now that means that Gabe slotted in that number two spot is going to produce. You see, production is based off opportunity. When you're given the opportunity, you can produce. Somehow, my guy Davis was buried in the depth chart behind Emmanuel Sanders, who they went out and got last year, behind Cole Beasley. You know, who was a slot guy. He's not even on the team right now, right? He's not even on the team anymore. So it's like, I don't know why it had to take an eight-catch, 208 um, yards, 201 yards outing against Kansas City in the playoffs for them to realize. Yeah. (laughs) For them to realize that they had a guy in the room. I watched Gabe Davis his um, rookie year. I said, that guy's talented. I thought he should have been the guy that moved up on the depth chart. Somehow it took that opportunity and that performance where Stephon Diggs was getting taken out of the equation for them to realize, okay, we got a guy in our room and he could be that 1B complement to the 1A Stephon Diggs. So I do believe in that offense that's going to throw the ball a lot. He's going to have a lot of opportunities for big plays and touchdowns to win you your fantasy league. So that's my breakout player. Zach, to end this show, I want to go to the fantasy bus of the year. Who's going to be the biggest bus in fantasy? And Zach, I'm going on um, Ezekiel Elliott. I'm going with Ezekiel Elliott here. At some point, the Cowboys are going to move on from Ezekiel Elliott. When you look at his contract, they were financially tied into Zeke last year with that guaranteed money. This year, he's entering the non-guaranteed season of his contract. Do the Cowboys really want to pay him $10 million when you have a guy as explosive as my guy um, Tony Pollard? out of the backfield, a guy that's more versatile, that could do more than Ezekiel Elliott, you'll be a fool to do so. So I do believe at some point the Cowboys are going to pivot away from Ezekiel Elliott and give Tony Pollard, who will be the more and clear effective back, the larger role. So, yeah, I'm going with Ezekiel Elliott as my fantasy bus of the year. Yeah, this is always tough, but my fantasy bus will be another running back. Derrick Henry of the Titans. And the reason why I say this is because I just don't think he's going to be able to match the expectations that are given on him. When you're drafting Derrick Henry, you're expecting him to be one of the five best, if not the best running back in the NFL. And given his age, given the injuries that he's coming back from, he, I I don't even put much stock into this, but I'll say it. He didn't look great in that playoff game against the Bengals. He didn't look like himself, but I'm sure he'll be better than that. Uh, The Titans also have three starters on their offensive line over the age of 30. I'm not particularly high on the Titans as a team this season. And Henry, like he's part of the reason why they're so good. They're so effective. Uh, Yeah, I I think Derrick Henry will be my fantasy bust of the year. 